Hey friends, welcome back to another Tuesday edition of Hot News. Hope your life is enjoyable. I just wanted to show off that I got a cool little toy from our friends over at Autonomous. We're gonna be doing a video on this soon, but... Aw, oh, yeah. It's kind of weird to watch in real time. You're used to this, but now you get this. Anyways, let's go ahead and talk about today's big news, which is that Mind Factory out of Germany, which is one of the largest retailers of computer components there, has come out with specific numbers on what are the GPUs to buy and which ones are not based on trustworthiness because they released the failure rate for all of the GPUs that they sold. And it turns out that AMD or more specifically AMD vendors are a bit less reliable than Nvidia vendors. So let's go ahead and take a look at their actual spreadsheet right here. As you can see, the average on RMA percentage for the 5700 XT is 4% with the highest coming in for power color with 6% for the Red Devil and 6% for the Red Dragon. For the RX 5700 non-XT, Power Color's Red Devil had a 13% RMA rate and the Red Dragon had 7%, which is kind of high. Uh, as we go down the line, it gets less RMA because you don't necessarily have as many broken components. When it comes to 2080 Ti's, look at this, gain word, 11% there. MSI's Lightning Z had an 11% RMA rate. Palette with 11% on the Gaming Pro and the Dual. If you scroll on down, you can see that as we get towards it, some of these only have about an average of 1%, including the 2070 Super. 5% on the Gigabyte 2060 WinForce OC with the 2% overall return rate. 0% on the 2060 Twin Fan from Zotac. Very nice. And then finally, to round it out, if we look at the overall totals, AMD versus NVIDIA, AMD with a 3% return rate, NVIDIA with a 2% return rate. Obviously, NVIDIA outselling AMD by nearly 2 to 1. Maybe a little bit more. My math's a little bit off. But the rates of GPUs are actually kind of intriguing to see just how many are being sold and how many are being returned. This could be helpful information for you if you're looking to buy a brand new GPU, whether or not these companies or their specific products are relatively reliable because you can find out a whole lot from a reviewer when we show you a graphics card and we show you how ours performs. We actually don't know how it's going to perform in the long run simply because we don't we're like that's not the scope of the review. We're not reviewing them for six months to find out how many of them failed. With Mind Factory publishing this data, it's actually quite helpful. You'll find out that the worst SKU overall is the Power Color Red Devil 5700. The GPU series with the worst failure rate overall is the 2080 Ti's, which makes a lot of sense considering that even what when do we do this? October 30th, 2018, we did this video. An alarming number of 2080 Ti's are dying. Yeah, it makes sense that it was uh, gonna be NVIDIA's worst performer, but obviously a 5% failure rate isn't atrocious. It's not great, obviously, with so many of them being in double digits, Gainward, MSI, and Pallet all having double digit return rates on the 2080 Ti. It's quite concerning. You can see that, that whoa, they sold as many 2080 Ti's as they did 2080 Supers. That's crazy. 30,000 2070 Supers. You guys really love those cards. So those are the numbers. These are the cards, whether or not you should trust them, whether or not you should buy them. We'll leave a link in the video description for Mind Factory's data so that you can reference it going forward, seeing if it's a card that you want to pick up in the future. Does it have an abnormally high RMA rate? Power Colors Red Devils don't look like something that you should trust, even if it might not perform great. Or if you pick it up, just make sure that, yeah, you're going to get that warranty honored. But you don't have to worry about honoring a warranty on a chip you don't have because XMG announcing over on Reddit that there are apparently some supply constraints when it comes to the Ryzen 7 4800H processor that's supposed to be going into laptop supply bottleneck on AMD Ryzen and XMG Core. This is because apparently a lot of companies are finding out this is a good processor that we should put in our freaking laptops. Eight cores, 16 threads, Vega 7 graphics. It actually makes a lot of sense. I'm actually really jealous because Wootware just listed their Wootbook Metal 2, which my daily driver for my laptop has been the Wootbook Metal 1, but that had an i5, and this one is going to be rocking a Ryzen 7 4800H. So jealous. They're getting these in stock August 14th. So we are maybe not susceptible to the 4800H supply shortage. Maybe they will eventually, but jealous that I can't pick one of these up. If you're in South Africa, Wootbook, Metal, friggin' yes, absolutely, 100% which is not what Sony's saying about the DualShock 4 and whether or not it's going to be supported on the PS5. It's more like um, 20%, 30%. 
maybe 30, depending on the games you play with the PS4 controller, uh, not working with PS5 games whatsoever. It's just no, DualShock 4 does not work with PS5 games, doesn't even matter if it's cross title, if you're, it's on PS5, stop it, stop it. It will work with supported PS4 games that are there, but the DualShock 4 will work on the PS5, just not with every game. And when it comes to peripherals, such as steering wheels, fighting sticks, and all of that, they can be used with the PS5 and backwards compatible PS4 software, but not necessarily everything. And Sony's not guaranteeing that they're going to work. So if you bought a really expensive fighting stick, you might not necessarily be able to use it on the upcoming PS5 titles. This obviously seems to be a big bummer to a lot of people and people who invest very heavily into the accessory ecosystem. So this is not the news that a lot of people wanted. Does this affect you personally? I'm just going to be on the DualSense controller. I don't necessarily need to carry over my ds4 i'm not into the fighting games i don't have a wheel racing wheel that i care about so want to know how this affects you but there's more rumors coming out about the ps5 dual sense at least with regards to battery that it should be about three to four hours longer than the dual shock 4 which currently gets about six hours of battery life on average so this would put it in the nine to ten hour region which would be great that's coming as a courtesy of a leak of somebody who physically had a prototype in their hands coming out and saying that yeah the battery is definitely a lot better than the DualShock 4. And more PS4 news, Sony announcing a state of play for August 6th. A lot of people were anticipating that this might be a PS5 event. Turns out Sony coming out and setting our expectations appropriately, this will be PS4 and PS VR titles, and they'll have updates to PS5 games that you saw in the June showcase, but not, not, an update on the PS5 whatsoever, so don't even be looking for that. The episode comes in at 40 plus minutes on details of third-party published games to the PS4 and PSVR. And let's talk about publishing of benchmarks. The RTX 3080 getting a Time Spy benchmark, looking like it's actually 35 to 40% faster than the RTX 2080 Ti. You can see right here, it got the score of 8600. The Lightning Z 2080 Ti, which has an 11% failure rate, by the way, uh, had a score of 7,665. The Founders Edition considerably lower than that. So that seems to be a pretty good improvement going from a 2080 Ti to an 80, 35% would be about where a lot of people I think would be happy if they keep it at the same price. $700 for 35% better performance makes a lot of sense to me, but Google bringing down the price and bringing down the options when it comes to the Pixel 4 because reviews dropped yesterday. It looks like they're gonna start shipping out around August 20th. The Pixel 4a coming in at a price point of $350 and with MKBHD's review, as well as several other reviews, you can look at this nine to five Google review roundup. Essentially, yeah, it's $350. Yeah, there are a few compromises. The camera is phenomenal. It's $350, what do you want? Like this is essentially the best you're gonna do for $350. Six gigs of RAM, 128 gigs storage, a Snapdragon 730, which is a little bit low, but you get everything that you need with the Pixel 4a, especially at the price point. There are supposed to be more phones coming with Google teasing the Pixel 4a 5G, as well as the Pixel 5. The Pixel 4a 5G likely will come in at the $500 price point, which is kind of intriguing, considering the OnePlus Nord, which isn't in the US region, is gonna be retailing for around the $400 mark. So OnePlus getting 5G on on the budget phone, Pixel 4a more or less about the camera quality rather than the entire spec sheet that comes with it. Let me know what you think of the Pixel 4a down below in the comments. And let me know what you think of HyperX releasing the cloud core gaming headset with 7.1 surround sound. Yeah, I've heard of this one before. Um, I had these five years ago. They were the cloud twos and uh, they're roughly the same price. These are going for $70. And these look to be the exact same headphones. I don't know what HyperX is doing. They're launching a brand new headphone that's been around for half a decade at this point. And a few things that I can notice are slightly different is the changing color and then lack of stitching up here at the headband for cost cutting. But I mean, I will say the, the HyperX Cloud 2s were my favorite gaming headset for quite some time. So Cloud Core probably worth it, but really you're launching, come on, they've been out for ages. And so has the Impossible Burger, which is a burger made from plants. A lot of people do think that it actually tastes just like beef. Well, it's come to Publix. And if you don't know what Publix is, it's a great grocery store. I love shopping at Publix, where shopping is a pleasure. And yes, Impossible Burger to Publix. Great stuff. And Rolls Royce 
to Virgin Galactic. They revealed their Mach 3 aircraft as well as the partnership with Rolls-Royce when it comes to design aesthetics and the design philosophy of the aircraft is geared around making high speed travel practical, sustainable, safe, and reliable while making customer experience a top priority, essentially meaning that I will not be able to ever afford this. This will be for the top 1% of the 1% and I will hard pass on this, but it does look beautiful. What also looks beautiful is not this, but there is a new AI technique that allows you to unselfie your selfies. And if you're wondering what the heck an unselfie is, well, you know, when you're taking a picture, I don't even have a phone. I have an LTT store water bottle, ufdstore.com. Let's say when you're taking a picture of yourself with a phone, right? Your, your arm is outstretched and you can see that. You have a different arm posture, which creates a whole different environment when it comes to the pictures. Well, this AI will make it so that your arms and body look like you've been taken a picture of by some other person rather than you doing it yourself. They apparently used AI generated people too, because uh, a lot of this looks odd, real odd, like it's kind of disconcerting, but you can see here the selfie imagery converting into lower arms. I mean, basically this is gonna be a great way for me to hide my loneliness and I am not experiencing this once in a lifetime thing by myself. No, totally. I had somebody there who took a picture of me. Don't you worry. I'm not lonely. I did not use on selfie. And I am not going to continue this episode of Hot News any longer. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate you guys being here. Don't forget uh, that this week is a little weird because my son does have surgery going on at some point. So we're not sure if I'm going to be able to do an episode every day this week. Big thanks to everybody who's sticking forward, sticking around with us for that. I will be done now and I'm thankful for you. Goodbye.